All right, so today we had an amazing play on GCTK going up from $1.38 per share to highs of nearly $3.50 per share. That's over a 100% profit in a single day. And I'm gonna be breaking down exactly how I was able to get the bottom tick entry. I literally bought the lowest price of the day Trading a strategy that is super, super simple. You'll be blown away by how simple it is. No indicators, no crazy formulas needed, just simple support resistance trading. So I'm gonna be breaking down this trade with you guys to help you learn this strategy and hopefully implement it for yourself and get trades like this in the future, all right? So with that being said, let's jump into it. I mean, you guys already know we're gonna be focusing all in on GCTK. This was the the prime stock of the day. It still looks overall bullish too, right? I am still holding a position on it. I wish I had a bit more size, but it is what it is. Uh, but this was just a beautiful play that we laid out this morning in the pre-market webinar and from the watch list. So I just wanna kinda go over my reasons for focusing on this one. It's very simple, but people really overcomplicate these things, right? When it really is just such a simple rule of previous resistance as new support. Those are going to be the strongest stocks, especially in small caps, right? Those are going to be the strongest stocks that you'll ever see are ones that do this type of pattern. I'm going to be breaking it down for you guys. All right. So pretty much in DCTK, this was a kind of more low key stock. Not many people knew about it on, on Thursday. I forgot Friday market closed on Thursday. This was kind of a low key stock but it had a very decent you know, price action to it, right? Like you can see. Now this is without looking at any news, anything like that, right? Because I'm pretty sure they had no news. I'm not too sure. But the news and stuff doesn't even really matter. It's all just about the price action because that is what drives trader psychology and in turn drives price. So on Thursday, you can see that this thing had a big spike and it topped out at around 125, right? Technically topped out. The top candle wick is at 138. And then through the morning, afternoon, it kind of went sideways. You saw it popped up, had some volume. Some people were trying to, you know, push it, consolidated, and then eventually it squeezed in after hours. So just from this view, you know, one of the things that is kind of second nature to me, but I think is very powerful, just kind of understand when you're looking at these charts, is you have to look at it from a sense of, how are the traders positioned in this, right? So for me, whenever I look at this chart, the first thing I think of is, all right, well, we can just assume there's probably shorts trapped, right? You could probably assume that there is probably some short sellers just due to the fact that it held resistance, right? Holding resistance means that there is quite literally more sellers than buyers and sellers are also short sellers. So we can kind of gauge that, okay, there's probably some short sellers here. And also there's a very common thing for short sellers on these, you know, just bad low price small caps is once they see it fall below VWAP, they like to short into VWAP as resistance. You can see here, probably some short sellers here as well, and probably some here as well, right? So that's the first thing I see just from glancing at the candles, right? Because for me, whenever I look at the candlestick chart, I don't really care about the individual candles itself. I care about like, what is the story that the candles are telling me? And this chart tells me that, hey, this thing has a lot of short sellers and this broke out higher. So anyone who shorted on Thursday is effectively underwater, right? They're going to be compelled financially to buy back in, right? Because in order to cover a short, you need to buy back shares. Basically, this core strategy is all built around the idea of leveraging that fact that if there are sellers underwater, they're going to be compelled to buy back in. And them buying back in means that there's going to be support. And so just from a short seller perspective, you know, if you're a short seller who went short 138, um, well, you're going to be compelled to want to, number one, not stop out, you know, max loss because you don't want to take that max of loss. You're going to be compelled to try to cover as close to break even as you can, right? Like as long as you can handle it. So that was, you can see, the basis for this holding previous resistance as new support, right? No crazy indicators, no MACD, no moving averages, none of that stuff is needed, right? No stochastics, no Bollinger Bands, just very basic horizontal lines. 
So we looked at this this morning and I recall this was a big, you know, mover from Thursday. I was like, oh man, this one looks looks great for just that idea of, uh, you know, using previous resistance as new support. Now, you know, if you've watched some of my other things and you know that usually most of the time in this room, you know, we talk about using a line chart, right? So that would be at 125. But there are some cases, it's not really a hard set rule of when, but in general, I like to not focus on the line chart completely whenever there's a lot more volatility. So this stock, right, it, it went from, you know, 140s to a high of 260 in one single spike. That's a lot of range. That's a lot of volatility. So whenever there is a massive volatility, I will start to consider treating support as like a range, not an exact point. So in doing so, what I usually do is I mark off both the, the actual high of day, just using the candlestick wick, and also the lion chart area. And so from there, I get an area of support where I can plan a trade around. So the top of the area is at about 138, the bottom is at 125. So it still makes it very easy to plan, right? Because I just still do this same exact thing, but now I can just have two orders, one at the top, 138, one at the bottom, 125, and my average is around the middle at like 131. That's kind of how I plan the trade from a trade planner perspective, right? Um, so, you know, this is a very awesome tool that we use here in TradeBuddy. And I think everyone should leverage and utilize this tool because it makes planning the trade very simple. Because especially with trades like this, where the range is kind of insane, uh, having a tool that just tells you how many shares to trade is very valuable. So let's just say that you have... Let's say you have a $10,000 account, right? Decently sized, nothing too crazy. And let me just bring this up right here. So this is the trade planner, right? So this means that for every trade, you can max lose 200 bucks. Let's say that the entry price is in between the top and bottom. So like right at like, you know, 132 or whatever. Max loss for me is always the next support lower, no matter what, no matter how far it seems like it is, it's worthwhile planning it in this way. The so next support lower is down near 88 cents. The max loss is 88. And usually for me, the first target is just the first intraday resistance. So this is at about 248. Now, you know, I'll be honest, when I was planning this trade in the morning, I didn't really think that it could squeeze up that strong. So I actually noticed that, uh, you know, this is a, this is a, this one thing I use for resistance sometimes. The daily 200 moving average typically acts as a good level of resistance. Oh, this is actually a lot lower than where I had it. Because on thicker swim, it was at like $1.90 something, right? And that kind of lined up with this support area here. That's what I used as my first target. Technically deviating from the strategy. Um, but still even using 197 as your first planned profit, it's a decent trade. I guess here it has it as less than one to one. Maybe I have the numbers a bit off, but let's just say that you use 248. Okay. Because we can see that it did run there pretty easily. Let's say 248 is first planned profit. So now it tells you that you can use 455 shares on this trade and at the first target, if you want to cover 200 bucks, you only have to sell 172. But then you still have like 200 or like 320 shares left over for the further squeeze, which is very powerful. And this is important to use because, you know, if you use these same, these same levels, right? Long 138, max loss 88 cents, and you just went all in, you would be taking a massive loss if the trade did fail. So... Managing your risk by sizing accordingly is something that many people, almost no one talks about. And I think it's like one of those key things that a lot of traders are missing. So from there, you know, this is all planned in the pre-market. We were looking at the stock and, and then you can see five minutes after market open, it had this one very quick wick down and bottomed at about 136. 
So the thing about these type of entries, right, using the previous day high as new support is that they're a dip by entry. So fundamentally, it's not something that you can catch with a market order. You have to have a limit order waiting out there to catch it because you don't want to like wait for the confirmation to see if it's going to hold because by the time it tested down and held, it literally bounced almost instantaneously back up into the 150s. So if you're waiting for confirmation, you'd automatically be losing an extra 13 cents. And even with confirmation, there's no guarantee that it's not just going to fall back down anyways, right? So for me, my philosophy with buying these entries is I would rather just have my order there, take the risk. If it holds, great, I have the best entry possible. If not, no big deal. I planned my trade, so I know what my max loss is, right? And that to me is a lot more systematic, a lot more repeatable. But then from there, after getting the entry, you know, a one bad thing is that because I planned my the trade using a range of support, I didn't get my full size. So I didn't get the full size I wanted to. It kind of sucks, but it's no big deal. Whenever that happens, I just continue the plan with the size I had and manage accordingly. Like I don't add in higher. I don't, you know, chase in the rest. I just get the size I have. That's what the market gave me. And I'll just work with that. And then from there, just a matter of locking in partial profits along the way. So like I said, we had some key levels in mind. Number one, we had 197. That was my first target. 247, next target right here, right here. And uh, just along the way, as it was kind of bouncing up, I had limit sales to take partial profits along the way just to kind of guarantee that I can make this profit back. So I sold some at 197, I sold some at 249. And then from there, uh, you know, once it broke out over 250, I was like, okay, wait, this is, this is a very strong stock. It's not really something that we've seen for the past week or so. Usually lots of these stocks have been kind of either breaking out and then failing or just testing resistance. So this one breaking out to new highs like showed me that, wow, this is actually very strong. So I went to the bigger picture, the weekly chart, because daily charts kind of, busted. It's not easy to read. And we saw that there was another resistance line, like one of the more obvious ones, uh, right near like two or like 310 ish, right? You can see it was this big support bounce, bounced like two times there, then broke down, bounces resistance. That seemed like a fairly, you know, large level. And the next one after that is like near 450. And there's one like right here near 376. Like I saw too that, hey, this is kind of, you know, lining up with the five minute chart from here i kind of took a deviation and this is something that you can choose to do depending on how you've locked in your partials along the way there's no real solid rule to this because technically right technically big picture this is bullish as long as it holds 249 right at or above 249 it still is bullish because that is previous resistance that can hold as new support big picture this stock is not weak until it breaks down through 249. That's my philosophy. Uh, but with that in mind, right, um, you know, I definitely want to lock in some profits up here if it gives me the chance to, because ideally what I want to see happen is ideally it would, you know, just pull back from here and then we can get the retest and a new entry down at 250. It does make things a bit more complex, but that's how I'm kind of trading this one because I did not lock in partials uh, at 376. So I'm just kind of waiting to see. So now my main philosophy, and it's kind of breaking down right now, so I will be likely exiting the rest. I wanted to see this hold 310 and continue because as long as it can do that, it's like very clearly super bullish and I could just hold it overnight. Now we are seeing some weakness down through 310. I will probably be exiting more of my position here and then planning a new trade just to buy a whole new position using 250 as support. Because fundamentally, as long as it holds 250 as support, it is big picture bullish still. And it's almost setting up in the same exact way that it did from Thursday into today, where come tomorrow morning, it might have some weakness tomorrow morning, maybe sell off down to 260, 250, and day three shorts, we'll look at that and say, hey, it's finally opening up week. I'm going to short this thing when they are missing the bigger picture that it is just retesting 
previous resistance as new support. And as long as it can keep repeating that pattern, it's going to keep doing that, that process. Overall, very awesome trades today on BCTK. And that is, that is pretty much the main breakdown of it. So if you stuck around for the whole video, then hopefully that means that you enjoyed this lesson and you enjoy the way that I teach trading. I want to help you on your trading journey. So I have a free 14 day trial for my entire course and mentorship, everything. I have a room called Trade Buddy where we help other people succeed in trading. And this is a 14 day trial. So you can jump in, get all of our content, get our course, learn everything. Try it out. If you like it, stick around. If you don't, cancel. No hassle at all. So I want to see you in there ASAP. Be sure to join before tomorrow so you can join in on the pre-market webinar where we're going to talk about the trades of the day. All right. So with that being said, catch you in the next video. Thank you.